Okay, in this question, we're talking about price floor. Uh, this is the USDA milk question from Krug and Wells Microeconomics. So chapter five, which is the market strikes back, question four. The question asks, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, USDA, administers the price floor for milk set at 10 cents per pound of milk. Uh, and then the question notes that the, actually, the official price floor is $9.90. $9.90 per 100 weight of milk, uh, which is a uh, an 100 weight of milk is uh, 100 pounds, implying that the um, price floor per pound of milk is 10 cents. Uh, so at that price, according to the data from the USDA, the quantity of milk produced in 2003 was, uh, by U.S. producers was 170 pounds, and then the quantity demanded was 169 billion pounds. To support the price, uh, the so to support the price of milk. At the price floor, the USDA had to buy a billion pounds of milk, and then the accompanying diagram shows the demand uh, and supply curves for this market of milk over here. Um, so A, question A asks, in the absence of the price floor, how much consumer surplus is created, uh, how much producer surplus is created, and what is the total surplus? So let me give me a second to set this up. Okay. So let's start off with a recap of what uh, consumer surplus is. Um, so first off, it's, well actually, first off, it says in the absence of the price floor. So ignore this black line right here. In the absence of the price floor, uh, the price that occurs is going to be that equilibrium price where quantity demand equals quantity supplied, and that's going to be at point E. So the equilibrium price in this market is going to be eight cents per pound of milk, and the equilibrium quantity is going to be 169.5 billion pounds of milk. So here's uh, equilibrium. So uh, what is the consumer surplus? The consumer surplus uh, is going to be uh, for consumer surplus. Think of it. Think of it this way. Think about this this portion of the demand curve up here. These reflect the fact that there are people here who are willing to spend 14 cents per pound of milk. So uh, let's do 13 cents. So at 13 cents per pound of milk, there was this quantity, you know, reflecting billions and billions of. Uh, pounds of milk that people would be willing to demand at 13 cents. However, the market cleared at 8 cents per pound of milk. So those people who are willing to dish out, you know, 13 cents per pound of milk only had to dish out 8 cents. So their consumer surplus is that difference between the price they were willing to pay and the price that they in fact actually had to pay. So following the demand curve, you could calculate the total consumer surplus as equivalent to the difference um, to, as equivalent to the value of this triangle here. Um, so let's calculate, let's just calculate that right now. So uh, what you need to do is apply the uh, consumer surplus rule. Um, so yeah, again, finding the value of that. Uh, and we're going to calculate it by calculating the value of the triangle here. So give me one second. Okay, so what's the value of this triangle? Um, the, value of the, the, area, the value of the area of a triangle is equal to the... The, length, the height, so the, this distance here, so 0.14 to 0 0.08, so 0.14 minus 0 0.08, times the um, distance from here, so 0 to 169.5, so that's 169.5, and then uh, because it's a triangle, you divide everything by 2, so that's uh, 0 0.06 times 169.5, and then that's going to be equivalent to so you got 0 0.06 times 169.5 and then that quantity divided by 2 so it's going to be this amount here 8.085 billion dollars Um, so the units on this side were per pound, price per pound of milk, so dollars per pound, and then the va the units on this side were billions of pounds, so they're the same units. Um, so you could, when you, when you calculate the value of the consumer surplus, it's going to be five point zero eight five billion dollars. Cool. So that's the um, consumer surplus. Let me. Let's see. I need some more room, so I'm going to shrink this guy. Uh, so what's the producer surplus? The producer surplus is equivalent to this little area right here. Uh, 
So the producer surplus, um, what's the value of the producer surplus? Well, think of it, first off, think about this portion of the supply curve. Um, down at this really low price, like at 0 0.03 cents per pound, there was some small quantity of suppliers who were willing to, to sell milk at uh, 3 cents per pound. However, this market cleared at 8 cents, so those people got a profit of the difference between 8 cents and 3 cents times the quantity they were willing to sell. So, you know, another way to think about it is that just there's some portion of the supply curve that reflects, you know, really efficient producers. You know, they were willing to sell at this really low price, but they didn't have to. The, the market cleared at this much higher, this much higher price. Um, and then the difference is their producer surplus. You could think of it as profit. However, the reason why it's called producer surplus and not producer profit is that I think that concept of surplus is to take into account like a lot of other things than just profitability. But if you want to think about it just profit, then go for it. Um, so we're going to calculate the area of this triangle here, which is equivalent to the producer surplus. Um, so once again, we're using the triangle rule. So from 0.8 to 0.2 is going to be 0 0.06. Uh, and then once again, the equilibrium quantity is exactly what it was before. So 169.5. And then we've already done that math. So it's going to be equal to $5.085 billion. So the producer surplus is 5.5, sorry, $5.085 billion. So you got a producer surplus of $5.58 billion, and you got a consumer surplus of $5.58 billion. So the total surplus is just equal to um, them both added together, which uh, I think we, I saw on the calculator was like 10.17, I think. Let's see. Yeah, so the total consumer surplus is $10.17 billion total surplus. Cool, so moving on to part B. Uh, with the price floor at 10 cents per pound of milk, consumers buy 169 billion pounds of milk. How much consumer surplus is now created? So where before we had an equilibrium at uh, price of at 8 cents per pound, an equilibrium quantity of 169.5 billion, we now have this price floor in place at 10 cents per pound. So the, um, the new consumer surplus is going to be equal to this quantity right here. So you got the demand curve. Uh, remember, the demand curve reflects uh, the quantity demanded for each price. So you know, at 14 cents per pound uh, of milk, there was this small quantity up here, and then down at 10 cents per pound of milk, you had 169 billion um, gallons of milk demanded by um, the demand curve. Uh, at any price that's um, lower than that, uh, the quantity demand increases. However, the price floor is put in place. So it's like a law saying that the price may not be anything less than that. You can't sell for anything less than that. So that means the total quantity demanded is this 169, and that's it. You know, there's no more sales going on. So we need to find the area of this triangle, um, which is. So the difference between point four, point 0.14 and point 0.10 is uh, point zero 0.04, and then times that by uh, the quantity demanded, so 169 billion. And then what's that equal to? Got 6.76. Oops, divided by two. Since it's the area of, an, of, a, of a triangle, so the um, consumer surplus is 3.38 billion, which is reduced. Where before we had 5.085 billion dollars consumer surplus, now we have 3.38 billion dollars consumer surplus, a decrease. Uh, moving on to part C, uh, with the price floor at 10 cents per pound of milk, producers sell 100. Are, producers are willing to sell 170 billion pounds of milk. 
um, and then some of some to consumers and some to the USDA. How much producer surplus is now created at this price? So we're saying the price is now set up this 10 cents uh, here, and then um, we're told that the USDA is going to produce is going to purchase anything that consumers don't produce. Um, so we're calculating the area of the triangle equivalent to here. Once again. So the producer surplus for this market setup, you know, once again, where uh, consumers purchase everything up to this point, and then the government purchases everything past it, is this whole area. Um, so you know, there were some suppliers down here who were willing to, to sell for only two cents, but at a price of ten cents, you know, they get that surplus, that producer surplus, that extra profit. Uh, and then similarly, all the way up to here, you know, there were some people who were willing to sell at uh, nine cents, but the government has guaranteed them that extra price of uh, ten cents, so they're able to get this profit of here. So we're producing, we're calculating the, the producer surplus of that entire area. So the distance from point one to point two is point zero eight. Uh, and then the distance from here to here is 170 billion. So that is uh, 0 0.08 times 170 divided by 2. So that's 6.8. So the producer surplus is $6.8 billion. So introducing this price floor, and a price floor such that the government purchases all the extra uh, milk in the market produces a produces surplus of 6.8 billion dollars, uh, and that's an increase from before. Remember, before it was the producer surplus was eight. Or sorry, was uh, 5.085 billion dollars. It's now increased by about a billion dollars. Moving on to part D, how much money does the USDA spend on buying up surplus milk? So how do we find that? So we know that the producer surplus is equal to this white triangle that I added in here, the distance from uh, yeah, that whole spot. Um, so which portion of that do our consumers paying for and which portion of that uh, is the USDA paying for? Okay, so at 10 cents per milk, the quantity demanded among actual consumers, so non-government, is equal to the, this portion of the blue line. So from zero to 169 uh, billion pounds of milk. That's all being purchased by non-government people, you know, like the actual demand. Uh, but then the government is saying, we'll step in and say that, uh, you know, if, if people are willing to supply 10 cents, they'll pay for all of the extra. So the government portion is this triangle that I'm pointing out here. So let me uh, show, yeah. So the... Um, government the USDA purchases is equal to this this little triangle area right here um, and then equivalently this whole area uh, the the consumers had pay for this whole area is the what the government is willing to pay for so what's that all equal to uh, once again we're applying the formula for the area under a triangle give me one second so applying the area under a triangle so the distance from 10 cents to 6 cents is at 0 0.04. And then times the distance from 169 to 170, so that's 1 billion. Uh, excuse me, I'm doing that all wrong. Uh, so this is USDA purchases. What I was describing a second ago was the portion of the producer surplus that the USDA is, is providing. But this question is just asking, you know, how much money is the USDA actually spending? So in order to calculate that, uh, we need to know that there's that the price they're willing to guarantee is uh, 0.1 cents per gallon of milk, per pound of milk, you know, 10 cents per pound of milk. Uh, and then the quantity that they're purchasing is the distance from 169 to 170. So they're willing to spend um, 10 cents per pound of milk and they're purchasing 1 billion pounds of milk. So they're purchasing um, 0 0.1 billion dollars worth of milk. So that's 100 million dollars worth of milk.
So $100 million is the, the amount that the USDA is spending. Cool. So yeah, $0.1 billion, $100 million. And then lastly, Part E, uh, Part E asks, uh, taxes must be collected to pay for the purchases of surplus milk in, uh, by the USDA. So as a result, total surplus, uh, producer plus consumer surplus, is reduced by the amount the USDA must spend on buying surplus milk. Using your answers for Part B through D, what is the total surplus when there is this new price control, and how does that compare to the total surplus uh, from Part A? So first off, just as a reminder, what was the total surplus from Part A? Um, you know, we added up the initial, like the market equilibrium consumer and producer surplus. We got $10.17 billion total surplus, like the total value extracted from, you know, the allowing trade for milk. Uh, so what's the new total surplus? Well, the consumer surplus introduced in the price floor was this $3.38 billion. So you got the um, so the consumer surplus was the 3.38. The producer surplus increased to 6.8. Uh, and then we also have to mi minus how much the USDA spent purchasing that extra surplus milk. So that was equal to uh, 0 0.1 billion. What is that when you add it all together? That is 3.38 plus 6.8 minus point. Oh, added that wrong. 3.38 plus 6.8. Minus 0.1. So the new consumer surplus, sorry, the new total surplus is $10.8 billion. $10.08 billion. So before it was $10.17 billion, now the total surplus is $10.08 billion. So introducing this price floor, this market manipulation, reduces in a reduced total surplus to uh, participants in this market. Uh, and that's it. Uh, hope, thank you, and hopefully all of that was helpful to you.